<laughs> I got a raging nerd on. Ooh, another episode of Complete Gaming. Feels so good to be able to say that while I'm wearing the belt. Woo! Are you done? Oh, not yet. Almost. Okay, yeah, now I'm done. Welcome to Complete Gaming. So we're going to start off with the $20 challenge. Uh, this is where, oh, let's put the rules up first. Here's the rules of the $20 challenge. Right. And this is where Kyla and I both get $20 to spend on video games, game related stuff throughout the week, and you guys let us know who spent it better. Last week we have an overwhelming majority, as I showed in the beginning, of people who like my pickups versus Kyla's. Hence me wearing the belt and Kyla not. Not. So uh, this week, um, I'm going to let Kyla go first. Okay, um, first thing oh, I Wait, let's put $20 on the clock. On the clock. <laughs> All right. Alright, first thing I got was um, the Magic Quest starring Mickey Mouse for $1.99 at Savers. When we went there, quickly, someone like this was like pulled off the shelf, like someone looked at it and put it down. And most of the Super Nintendo games are like $6.99 there. Yep. And this was $1.99, and they still put it back. Oh, there's the $10.99 price yeah. tag on there. It's a really good game. If you guys haven't played it, definitely get the Magic Quest. Okay. Um, and then I got this uh, blue Xbox controller, which is actually really nice for four ninety nine. And um, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, blue. it's really nice. Um, the other thing I got was Page Master, which was two ninety five. Um, I mean, people say it's a crappy game, but I like the movie, so I bought it anyways. And then uh, the last thing I got was a complete copy of Final Fantasy uh, Tactics Advance. Uh, box is in really nice shape, has the manual, cartridge looks good. So yeah, ten dollars. Yeah, great pickups, in yeah. my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, I had a fantastic week. He did. Week. He's probably he wins again this week. I already know. Hey, I let, just know. let the let, let the people decide. It's true. So I did have a fantastic week though. Uh, starting off, I got I found the Super Scope out of Savers. It doesn't have the receiver and it doesn't have the aiming piece here, but uh, it's in fantastic shape. It looks brand new. It has the battery cover, and this was, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. But anyway, this was $1.99, and I had one of these like about 10 years ago. I don't know what happened to it, so it's really cool to have this back in my collection. Um, next, I got, I went to a tag sale, and I, I, pretty, I was pretty sure that everything was going to have, any video game stuff was going to have been sold, because I went the next day, I went Saturday. But they had this there. It's a Walking Dead plug-and-play plug and play game. Um, and she had a four dollar sticker on this and I had seen this on the internet anyway before so I asked her if she'd take two bucks and she said yeah. This game is actually pretty fun. I had a good time playing with it. This does not work with old televisions. You have to have a new TV to use this. Um, the downfall of this is the battery usage. This gun alone takes four AA batteries and the sensor takes three AAA batteries. I mean, fuck, right? <laughs> like, who the hell? Like, yeah, this might have only cost me two bucks to buy the unit, but in general, over a lifetime, it's going to cost me probably tons if I like playing it that much. Um, so anyway, that was cool. Uh, next, this, this might be my favorite find of the week. When I was at Savers um, in the board game section, they had this Donkey Kong Country pog pitching game. Let's see if we can get that without glare. This was three ninety nine. It's complete, and it actually has all thirty six pogs in here. Yeah, this um, is super cool. It is really cool. The only problem with this, and I love the artwork on this. It, it almost looks it's like old. Yeah. It, it looks like it's like an older thing. Anyway, um, the only problem with this is the pogs are like misstamped. It's like when somebody put the sheet in to be stamped, it was crooked. And I'll, I'll do a zoom in right now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, and when I saw that, I almost didn't buy it because I was like, what the hell happened here? But <laughs> in, in the end, I was like, you know, I can't leave this behind. So this is awesome. This was $3.99. I don't know if I said that. But um, I, even if I never play this, it's going to look great in my collection. Uh, the last couple things I got, I picked up a copy of Heavy Metal for the Dreamcast for... Um, for three dollars and fifty cents, uh, this game isn't as good as I thought it was going to be. I'm not gonna lie. I thought this was going to be like a beat 'em up uh, instead of a, a fighting game. This is more like a fighting game. But the one cool thing is two people can play at the same time fighting one opponent, um, which is all right. But in general, I don't recommend it. There's better out there. And then the last thing I got, which 
Like, okay, so last week I showed you guys I got a GunCon 3 for the PS3, and I was playing um, the the uh, the uh, Time Crisis uh, Raising Storm collection, which had Raising Storm, it had Time Crisis 4, and it had um, uh, Dead Dead Storm Pirates, which was my favorite one. Anyway, this week I went to GameStop, and I almost passed it up because it's a really small one, but I went in anyway, and they had a complete one. Um, this is Time Crisis 4, and so this was sold just the box with the gun and the sensors and the um, yeah and the sensors, and it was five dollars and thirty nine cents. And then so I went up to buy it, and the guy was like, "You know, this doesn't come with the game, right?" And I was like, "Well, that's fine." And he said, "Some guy had come in, bought this, and then came back and returned it because the game wasn't in there, but they had a copy of the game." As you can see, it's all complete here, and, and I, so I just bought the copy of the game with it, which, and this was a dollar and seventy-nine cents. So together, um, it was I don't know whatever it cost, but um, it was a great deal. And now Kyla and I can both play together Dead Storm yes. Pirates or Time Crisis Four. And Time Crisis Four is actually really good. So if you have a move or you have a Gun Count Three, definitely get it. I mean, it's like a dollar and seventy cents. You can't beat it. So yeah, so those are my pickups. Anyway, let us know in the comments who you think spent uh, their uh, money better. Probably Zach. I got lucky this week, but anyway, let it, let us know in the comments who spent their money better and. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Alright, uh, welcome back to the Recommendation Station. Pretty much, I think we're almost always going to be giving positive reviews, or things that we like that we've been playing. I haven't been playing anything I've necessarily hated for a while, so anyway... Um, and I've only been playing one thing for a long time. Yeah, Final Fantasy XIII. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, Kylie, you want to go first? MMOs ruin lives, people. Don't do it. They do. You can go first. Yeah. So, um, this is an all-time favorite of mine, um, and if you haven't played it, you need to, because at this point, I think it's a classic. Yeah. And that's Kenmar and Macy for the PlayStation 2. Um, it's a fun game. You're a little prince, a little alien prince. I mean, they're not aliens, but they're definitely not human. Yeah. Um, and you go around and you just roll stuff up. It's definitely like a challenge game. You have to <clears throat> get your ball of trash to be a specific size within an allotted amount of time. Um, you pick up gifts along the way and... Um, you know, like cool stuff like headphones or a scarf or a crown that the the king leaves for you. And I think that's like pretty much the only achievement you can get in the game is collecting all of the um, yes. all of the gifts from the king. Um, the story is hilarious. Just the shit that the king says is unbelievable. You know, first time I played this game, I never even read it. I was just like, nope, skip, skip, skip. Let me get to the game. And then the second run through, I actually read it, and it's hilarious. Um, it's also cool, you know, you pick up things like people, uh, animals, um, there's a bunch of different challenges when you're doing the constellations. Essentially what the game is, like, the king did something, all the stars in the sky are gone, so you have to roll up stuff on Earth to recreate the stars. Um, and so you do go and do the signs of the zodiac, so like, there's the... the bird one, I don't know what it is, you have to roll around and get as many, um... Uh, swans as you can um, and then there's the Ursa Major and Minor where you're trying to get the biggest bear possible. You have to avoid all the small bears, collect everything else, and then get the biggest bear you can. Um, so that one's fun. The twin one is definitely a lot of fun where you just have to pick up multiples. Overall it's a good game. It's a lot of fun. It's challenging. I like to go through because you have obviously they wanted a certain size but if you do it fast enough, you can make it bigger and therefore you get more points and even though it's really not a point based system, which is stupid. Yeah. They're like, this is your score, but it doesn't matter. The game is awesome. Yeah. It's so unique and it's funny. The cutscenes in that game are ridiculous. Oh, I know. So anyway, yeah, definitely get it if you see it. There's a bunch. There's one on PS3, there's two on PS2. They're, they're all over the place. Yeah, there's one on the yeah. Vita, which I don't have a Vita, but I really want one. I think so it's I on the PSP. It. Is it the PSP? Yeah. Are you sure it's yeah. the Vita? Whatever. Maybe it is the Vita. I don't know. It's on everything. Um, <laughs> great series. It's not, not next to Gen yet. Holding out for it. Uh, game I'm going to recommend is uh, Simpsons Hit and Run. 
This game, as most people say, or probably all people say, is it's the Simpsons versions of Grand Theft Auto. And it really is. It's, it's the same type of idea. You have this open world, a sandbox, and, and you're going around and doing these missions. But this game is definitely charming, and it's funny, and I loved playing this one. I, I mean, I beat it, and I thought it was great. They, they put Simpsons into a bunch of different games uh, recently, or within the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, where they had like the wrestling game, they had uh, the skateboarding game, and then they had, I can't remember the name of it, but it's the Crazy Taxi clone um, with the Simpsons. And this by far was the best, and it was really fun, and so if you see this and it's really cheap, pick it up, because it's definitely worth a play. You can play through different, you know, characters, you can be Bart, you can be Homer. Um, you can also get different um, costumes yep. for, like, I had Homer running around in the Moo Moo. Yeah. You remember when he was, like, <laughs> got really fat and yeah. wore the, the flower Moo Moo? Yep. Um, I think it's a little less open world than any uh, Grand Theft Auto well, game. Well, it's obviously not on the scale of Grand Theft Auto. Right. I mean, they, you know, they put much more time and, and money into that game than I'm pretty sure that this one got put into. Right. But it is fun. It yep. is funny, too. Yeah, it is. Um, there's a lot of racing involved, but you pretty much, you hit all of the hot spots in, um... Yeah, in, in, Springfield. in Springfield. But that's yeah. that's another cool thing is is almost just like or just like the the stick of truth they've given like Springfield like life where you can go through it and see where stuff actually right. is and, and that kind of stuff. Like you can actually go into the quickie mart yep. and I think there's that old man with the beard. He's in the freezer. He's just <laughs> in the freezer. Yeah. Anyway, the game the game is awesome and it's it must be cheap by now. And it's definitely worth a, a playthrough if not two. It's mm -hmm. it's really fun. I agree. Just the tip of the week. So our tip of the week this week. Tag sale season. Tag sale season. Yeah. I love tag sale season. <laughs> Everyone does. And you know, I, I've been lazy lately. I've been I've been not wanting to get out of bed uh, to hit tag sales. But at this point, I feel like wherever you're going throughout the day, you're gonna hit like 10 tag sales on your way there. Like if you're going to the supermarket, you're probably passing like 10 tag sales that you're right. going to be stopping at. And it's um, it's really important to actually stop. I mean, to be honest, sometimes we'll be going somewhere and we're on a time limit. Yeah. And we don't always have time to stop at every single one. But it is important because you never know what you're going to find. Yeah. Generally, I feel like there's two types of tag sales out there. Like people who are just, they just want to get rid of stuff. Yeah. And they don't care what they sell it for. And then there's the people who want to sell stuff to get rid of it but make money, which are the annoying ones. They are. Let me clarify something real quick. Uh, like, up here in New England, we call them tag sales. Right. You might call them garage sales, yard sales, whatever. It's right. people selling shit at the front of their house. Right. Um, yeah, some people... So I went to a tag sale like two weeks ago, and the guy had a bunch of Star Wars figures, and he was selling them for like five bucks a piece, and he would not budge. So this guy was like, I feel like he is selling them on the internet or selling them wherever, um... And, and he still wanted to get, like, he wasn't trying to get rid of them. He right. was pretty much trying to make money off of them, which, which is fine. But in my opinion, it's like, don't have a tag sale at that point. Right. Um, you know, if you're going to sell stuff for a bunch of money. But the good thing about tag selling is you can haggle. You can always haggle. Right. And, you know, when you go to the flea market, a lot of times people aren't as willing. I mean, a lot of times, I, I always haggle anywhere I go. But, uh, you know, I feel like people are much more willing to haggle when you go to um, a tag sale. Right. Because um, most of the time, it's like... The, the women in the house are just like, there's too much stuff, get rid of yeah. it, I don't care. Yeah, and you know you can haggle, you can, you can ask them if they have stuff inside, and, and, and a lot of times they'll bring it out. The, and the one thing I do want to say about tag sales is, when, you, when people complain about the price of like NES games or Super Nintendo games going up so much and becoming so expensive, which is true if, you, you know, if you're on eBay or, or on the internet, tag sailing is pretty much your last ditch effort to find those games because little samson is in someone's basement right now <laughs> you know and 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 they don't know what it yeah, is exactly you know the flintstones uh, surprise the dinosaur peak is in someone's basement that you know somewhere in this world that they don't know what it is and eventually it's going to be sold or you know given away or whatever so I feel like tag selling evens the playing field of collecting because you can go there and you can find things that other people are willing to pay a bunch of money for you're able to find it because it hasn't been exploited like eBay or Craigslist or something like that so I feel like it's the last time that it evens everything for, for people. It's true, um, yeah you definitely never know what you're gonna find there um, and I think that's the best part um, rummaging through I mean, sometimes you can tell when it's just like, I don't know, 
a bunch of old lady stuff like literally is just garbage yeah. that no one wants yeah. in their <laughs> Throw, to throw sell this it. shit away, lady. Don't try to sell it to me. Right. Like no one wants your tangled um, Christmas lights. Yeah. But in general, if you go buy them, hit them. Now, there, there is some problems with you do have to make time uh, for it. You have to get up early. You have to pay for gas. But And make sure you have small bills. Oh, yeah. And one thing as a warning, uh, as far as Craigslist goes, people have talked about other people making, like, fake tag sale posts. So you uh. go to find it, and then by the time you get there, you've wasted, you know, 30 minutes and those people who posted that fake sale are going to the other ones to get the stuff before you. So, Can't believe that. it's, it's really, really fucked up. Yeah, so, so I don't know, it's just, you know, make sure, use caution, um, because people do do that because they want to get first grabs at stuff and they'll send you to, you know, buttfuck Egypt <laughs> where they're getting the good stuff. So, it can happen, but, you know, just be careful about it, I guess. Right. I don't know any way to you know, any anti-measure to that, so <laughs> I don't really know what to say, but it, just know that it does happen. Mm -hmm. uh, Zach Latour is a closet homosexual. Getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on.